Hello, in this example from May June 17, paper 42, uh, we are going to look into the pretty well known equation that relates pressure and mean square speed, the macro and microscopic states. And let's go. So here you have a pressure at V, P, and volume V of an ideal gas is related to the density rho of the gas by this expression. State what is mean by this uh, bracket C squared. So if you've watched the lecture videos, you will know that this is simply the mean squared speed. I guess if you want to, you could also call it the mean square velocity. All right, part two. Use the expression given, this one, to show that the mean kinetic energy of a gas molecule, only one, uh, is given by this equation. All right, wonderful. This uh, 3 over 2 kT, where k is the Boltzmann constant and t is the thermodynamic temperature. So this proof is also part of your notes, but I can do it here again with you. So if you recall, uh, this one is 3 mark, uh, so better show everything clearly. P is equal to 1 over 3 rho c square, and this rho is density. So I will put P is equal to 1 over 3. I'm just going to put a big bracket here. Density would be the number of particle multiplied by the mass of one particle divided by the volume of your sample. Okay, so N times M, number of particle times mass of one particle is the mass of the sample divided by the volume of the sample. And here we have C squared. So what are we looking for again? We are looking for kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, uh, whenever we think about this, we should think about the classic kinetic energy equation. This EK is going to look something like half mc squared. Okay, and because we are looking at a average ke, see, mean ke, um, so we are going to take the mean square speed. Lah. So I see here, or I spy with my little eye, this is mc square and this is mc square. All right. So I'm going to maybe move this around a bit. Okay. So I will um, bring this one up. I will get 3 PV will be equal to nmc square. My friends, we need a half. So I'm going to introduce a half and also substitute my PV. So what is PV? Uh? We also know that, okay, I'm just going to write here, PV is equal to NKT. So I'm going to substitute NKT here, right? So that is our beautiful PV, this NKT here, just this NKT here, because this is PV, all right? Um, this will be equal to NM c square so of course if you're perceptive the n and n will cancel and since we want half so i will multiply both sides of the equation by half this will be 3 over 2 kt and you can see finally hence the kinetic energy will be equal which is equal to this will be equal to 3 over 2 kt all right so you stating this equation so where's the marks when you state this equation you will get one mark. PV is equal to NKT. This is one mark. All right. Then when you convert or you replace density. Okay, let me highlight the whole thing for you. When density is replaced by this one is equal to this one. This whole thing here is one mark. Okay. And then uh, algebra leading to half mc square convincingly and then subsequently this one is one mark all right so this is the type of proof that they can ask you as you watch the video you'll notice that the proof is very long and i'm not going to ask every single step but they can pick parts bits and pieces and different places to choose all right so be part one an ideal gas containing one mole of molecule is heated at constant volume. So constant volume is the important information here. All right. Uh, use the expression in A part 2, okay, which is a kinetic energy, to show that the thermal energy required 
To raise the temperature of the gas by 1 Kelvin has the volume of 2 over 3 R, where R is the molar gas constant. Whoa. Okay, let's take a moment and think about this. So we need to include R inside our equation. Alright, so let's break things down a bit. I can say that the thermal energy required, which is the heat required, so thermal energy required will be equal to the increase in internal energy. Okay, because when you add heat, you increase the internal energy, which is represented by the increase in temperature. So increase internal and in internal energy plus work done by or on the gas. But because there is constant volume here, so if you think back from your AS, right, if there is constant volume, there is no work done by the gas. So work done by gas is zero. So this part uh, touches a bit on the first law of thermodynamics, or you could also use logic. Ma. You apply this amount of heat. You want to increase the gas with this amount of uh, temperature. You want to increase the gas temperature by 1 Kelvin. So since our volume is constant, so the thermal energy required Q is just equal to your change in internal energy. Okay, Because the work done here is zero, constant volume. So also at the same time, your change in internal energy is equal to Ek for ideal gas. Remember, because the intermolecular forces are negligible, so there is no potential energy. So your internal energy is only due to the movement of the particles, but not the bond between the particles, which means this one I can substitute as, I have an equation for Ek, 3 over 2 kT. But this is for one molecule. We have how many molecules again? One mole, ah yeah, one mole of molecules. So we need to multiply by the Avogadro constant. So this Avogadro constant here is because there is one mole of molecules. Okay, but miss, I got this R. How to get rid of the R? Okay, one by one. Ah. So the change... If Ek is equal to 3 over 2 temperature, I mean the temperature, the current temperature, can I say that because it's proportional, that the change, okay, I'm going to change color a bit, hmm, the change in internal energy, delta U, is also equal to uh, 3 over 2 K delta T. Okay, so this one is just a unit temperature, right? So I'm going to put it all together now. Draw a line, put here, Q will be equal to 3 over 2. Let's group the Boltzmann constant and the Avogadro number together, okay, times uh, delta T, change in temperature, okay, because kinetic energy is change in temperature, times K times T times 3 over 2. So, in other words, or if you are a bit lost, 3 over 2 and K wouldn't change. Ma. So the only thing that would change your kinetic energy is your change in temperature. Okay, so I'm not going to put this here because that one is part of the formal proof, but hopefully you will get the idea. So here, because the change in temperature is 1, 1 Kelvin, I'm going to put 1 here. Alright, I'll put 1 here. And let's think a bit. Can I say that the Boltzmann constant K is R over Na. Miss, how you know? Uh? Um, it's the very definition. No? If you look at the very first lecture of your ideal guess, Boltzmann constant K is R over Na. So from here, you will get R is equal to K multiplied by the Boltzmann constant. Shift over. Lo. So Q will be equal to 3 over 2 R. Ha, proven. So you can see this topic, right? Sometimes you can get those proving questions. So you might be wondering, where is the mark? Okay, so W equal to 0 is one mark. So let me mark with a different color pen. Mm, I shall choose purple. Okay, I can. So W equal to 0, or the understanding that W is equal to 0, this is one mark. Okay, if I see something like Na 
times 3 over 2 kT. That means you know that this is one molecule and you know to multiply the Avogadro number. This is one mark. All right, and one M here. And finally, if you equate this, that means you bring this together. Lah. This is equal to this. So this equating will get you one mark. So the entire question so far is about proving. So don't get it in your head that this kind of guess questions, oh, they can only ask us to calculate. D depends on your luck, I guess. All right, finally, uh, we give you something to calculate. Nitrogen may be assumed to be ideal gas. All of you who are taking chemistry, don't panic. Assume only. The molar mass of nitrogen is 28 grams per mole, meaning if you have one mole, which is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles, it will weigh 28 grams. Using the answer in B part 1, which is 3 over 2R, calculate a value of specific heat capacity in joule per kg per kelvin at constant volume for nitrogen. Okay, so let's think a bit about what you have learned in the specific heat capacity chapter. Specific heat capacity, actually you can use the unit to guide you. Q, or the specific heat capacity, uh, let's say I call this C. Lah. C, the unit for C is joule per kilogram per kelvin. So this will be Q over M per kilogram. Kelvin is delta theta. Or basically, if you rearrange this equation, you will get your good old Q is equal to MC delta theta. Okay, can. So from here, Q is equal to MC delta theta. I am going to substitute values. How much heat is required? Well, look at this one. No? It's 3 over 2R. Isn't this interesting? This is for 1 Kelvin. Okay, so per Kelvin. I will highlight all the important information that we need to transfer. So this kind of question can be quite tricky. You need to read. 1 Kelvin per Kelvin. So this delta theta is going to be my second favorite number, which is 1. What's the mass, miss? Think of the molar mass. This is one mole. Okay, again, let me borrow another highlighter. One mole here will mean that, uh, so if the numbers that you look on top here, this is for one mole of molecules. This is 28 gram for every mole. So one kg, how many mole? So I'll write that down for you. Uh. Q is equal to 3 over 2 R is the energy required for one mole of gas to increase temperature by one Kelvin. But right now, if you look at our unit, we want one kg. So how do we convert to one kg? We need to borrow from the molar mass concept, where the mass of one mole of nitrogen is equal to 28 gram. But we want this to be kg. Ma. So we are going to substitute the 28 gram here uh, per kg. So please remember to convert. Lo. Let me zoom in a bit. 28 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So I need a bit more space. 28 grams times delta theta, which is 1 degree Celsius. Hey! We do have the value for R, right? R is 8.31. Find it in your table of values. So this would be 28 times 10 to the power of negative 3 times 1. And that, my friends, will give you the answer after consulting calculator of 445.2. I guess I could just write this as 450 or 445. Lah. So 445 joule for every kilogram, for every Kelvin, all right? So this one, this equation is not new to you. Q is equal to mc delta theta. The problem or the tricky part here is that we are borrowing from the previous derivation, okay? So let's review the question again. If you find yourself a bit confused, that's generally how you learn for this kind of long paper four question. Okay, so I am going to recap the question again because uh, this one is a little bit anomalous, but it's a really great question because it connects both the chapter 11, 12, and 10 together really nicely. So besides the preliminaries, based on the equation, 
that connects mean square speed and pressure, you are asked to show that kinetic energy is given by this equation. So this is a pretty standard proof. Just make sure you know the steps to equate, uh, to change the density into an m over v, and also to equate this uh, PV, the outcome of PV, and bring it together by rearranging and trying to come up with the expression of half mc squared. Okay, so that's that. And here, it's kind of like an idea that you will need to think about what happens when you heat up gas. Because you have one mole of gas particles, and then you want to show that the thermal energy required to raise the temperature of the gas by 1 Kelvin is this much. All right. So when you heat a gas at constant volume, because the only way to increase the temperature in this case is to heat up the gas because why? The co volume is constant. You are not compressing or expanding the gas. So you think about conservation of energy. Um, the thermal energy required will be equal to the increase in internal energy here. Increase in internal energy. Plus the work done. Let's say, for example, you add heat and the gas expands. But in this case, the gas does not expand. So then the W is zero. And then you will have Q is equal to delta U, meaning the heat added into a gas, the energy that we add into the gas translates into the gas particles moving faster and faster. So you can see this one will be equal to the change in internal energy, which for ideal gas is the change in kinetic energy. So it doesn't affect the bond because there's no bond in ideal gas. So the heat added will just change its internal energy, which, is, which will just change its kinetic energy. So then when you add heat, directly equal to increase Ke. So this is the long-winded relationship. Lah. You should think of when you heat the gas, gas particle can move faster, gas can expand. But right now, gas does not expand, constant volume. Maybe it's a sealed container. So the only way for the energy to transfer is for the particles to travel faster or the temperature to increase. So from here, you can, you can see that Q, um, I'm going to zoom in a bit, Q is equal to Kt, but because kinetic energy is 3 over 2 kT, so here is 3 over 2 kT, the T here is a change in temperature because we are talking about the change in internal energy, right? And because this is for one particle, we are going to multiply this by Avogadro constant because we are talking about one mole of molecules. So we multiply law. And then you also happen to know that the Boltzmann constant K is equal to R over Na. So we substitute inside. Alright, so this is a proving question. And then moving on, based on your expression, you can say that nitrogen may be assumed to be ideal gas and the molar mass is 28 gram per mole. So 28 gram per mole molar mass is one mole of nitrogen is 28 grams of gas. Okay, so calculate the specific heat capacity in joule per kg per Kelvin at constant volume for nitrogen. So I think this one is... Q equal mc delta theta, but we're looking for specific heat capacity, and this specific heat capacity has to be in uh, kilogram per Kelvin. So the answer that we have here on top, the derivation, is already for 1 Kelvin and for, hang on, loading, it's for 1 Kelvin, all right, and for 1 mole. So I can substitute the mass of one mole here, 28 gram, and the temperature of one Kelvin. And I know the heat required is 3 over 2 R. So then I just substitute law. Okay, and then I put inside. Alright, so this one might not be as straightforward, especially if you're not used to calculations in chemistry or stuff like that. And uh, that will be all for this example. See you in the next one.